you're going to come up with patient-focused regenerative medicine solutions, you have to have the patient involved. I think CIRM's got it right with regard to the strategic plan in, in terms of putting patients and people first. How did you first find out that you had myelofibrosis? Um, well, it was about eight years ago that I was diagnosed, and um, I was 28, and mm -hmm. the picture of health, I uh, ran every day, I ate healthy, didn't smoke, I recycled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, everything I thought, you know, was doing right, and I felt this little bump underneath my rib cage. And I went in, and after, you know, months of testing, trying to figure out, you know, what is wrong with you, they discovered I had myelofibrosis. Well, at the time that, you know, you all were doing your research, it wasn't there yet for me. And so um, my doctor said, well, this is what you have. There's no cure. There's no match for you uh, for a bone marrow transplant. And um, what we can do is monitor the progression of your disease. And as you get sicker, try to mitigate, you know, and manage those um, side effects. I'm 28, like that's not okay. That's not an okay answer. There was no hope. I kept asking, well, what can I do? Can I, can I eat just carrots? Can I eat better? Can I run more? Can I run less? Anything, and no, you know, there was nothing. Um, so it wasn't until I met uh, Dr. Jameson that someone gave me the hope you know, yes, we, we can try something. You can work with me um, on this research. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been on this trial for almost three months, and my spleen is getting smaller. <laughs> and this is after, you know, years of feeling like I'm trapped in that scene from Alien where this thing is just trying to jump out of my uh, torso, and it would just hurt constantly. And that was my future, this perpetual pain and this exhaustion from this disease. Like I was constantly stuck on the top of a mountain where there just wasn't enough air and I couldn't acclimate. I, you know, my friends would go out at night and they would be able to stay out past eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't and I felt exhausted constantly. And, and now I have energy. <laughs> I'm um, getting married in, in March. Yeah. To my fiance, <laughs> and I plan on staying out all night. <laughs> um, so yeah, this has just been the most amazing experience for me, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> well, we're grateful for you, Sandra. What do you hope for the future? What do you think we can do to make things even better in terms of your treatment or you know any kind of test we bring forward? Um, well, the you're kind of doing the thing that I really need, which is this collaboration, this ability to be a part of what you're, you know, this research. Because I know that there's no perfect answer yet, but um, eight years ago there was no answer at all. So I'm hoping eight years from now, you know, there will be that answer. And, you know, you've also forced me to start saving for retirement. <laughs> Nobody's retiring here. Stem cell biology is going to work. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. I really appreciate you coming here. Uh, March 17th. In Costa Rica. <laughs> In Costa Rica, yeah. <laughs>